This is Trevor Duke with Bob Johnstone of MJM Yachts. We're going to ask him a few questions about the 40 d you see in the background here. We are in sunny Miami at uh, Sea Island Marina. Uh, Mr. Johnstone, I know you have a history, a very illustrious history with uh, jay boats and building a lot of sailboats in your past. What did you learn building sailboats that translated into building power boats for MJM? Well, Trevor, uh, I think when you get involved in, in designing and creating uh, 40 plus boats, you learn something with each one of them. And uh, certainly when you apply sailboat technology, of course, what, what you have to do to create a good sailboat, the power boats, there are some things that uh, uh, you do that maybe other builders aren't doing. Uh, one of them is uh, you pay a lot of attention to low center of gravity. Uh, you don't want a boat that's rocking around, rolling, and so on and so forth. So the lower you get the, the vertical center of gravity over the water, the more stable the boat is going to be. You also learn that having a narrow boat creates less resistance and less drag and it pulls through the water and it cuts through uh, waves better. And, uh, and then in terms of performance, you're always in a sailboat trying to come up with uh, a stronger, lighter sailboat because you don't have, you just can't apply lots of horsepower to it. You've got to deal with the wind. And, um, and that uh, doesn't have quite the horsepower that some of these engines have. So um, what happened in developing the MJM line is uh, we created a boat that was lighter and stronger by using sail, racing sailboat technology um, and construction uh, than typical powerboat construction with heavy laminates and so on and so forth. So, um, yeah, it, it allowed us to get go into a leadership position in power boats in terms of fuel economy because after we created this boat that was easier for everybody to handle, um, guess what? It only burns yeah, half the fuel. Yeah, so I, that's, those, uh, that's performance. The statistics are available on your website. I noticed that uh, when compared to the 40 C Ray and uh, even the East Bay in your class for that 40 C, you got considerably. A better gas mileage. Uh, I think it was 1.2 nautical miles per gallon instead of 0.86 to 0.68 on those other boats. Um, you were talking about those heavy laminates, uh, getting away from the heavy laminates into the higher tech ones. Uh, with this boat, you've achieved the ISO Ocean uh, Class A rating, which means you can hit uh, seven meter seas, 23 footers, which I can't see. I wouldn't take the boat out in that, but I don't think I'd be. That wouldn't be a fun day on the water. <laughs> now, what else well, do you have to say about that rating? Well, the important thing is we wanted to create a, a product that somebody other than ourselves would say, this is the best it can be. And so the standard uh, is the International Standards Organization and based in Brussels. And um, they have a, a structural standard to meet for various categories. And offshore means you've got to be stay within certain miles of, of the coast. Um, ocean um, is the boat is, is qualified to go across oceans, and I think the 40Z is is probably one of the few, if not the only, boat of its size and type to achieve that that classification. And it's built to. The standard is a function of what you anticipate the maximum speed to be. And on that, this boat, with the biggest engines we might put in it, maybe you get 40, 45 knots. So the standard is based on 45 knots, and you point out seven meter seas. The people wouldn't survive, but the boats yeah. would. Yeah. So that's wouldn't that's be always a sure. Yeah. Um, another question I had for you. Um, we we're talking about some of the larger engines you could put in it. I know on this boat you offer it with the. Uh, Cummins Mercury Axius or the Volvo IPS. Correct. Uh, what have you come across in designing the boat in terms of uh, getting the boat up on plane, in terms of overall weight, I think the stern drives might be a little lighter, and if there have had to be any hull modifications or anything else that you guys have encountered while uh, looking at uh, both options? Well, you have the normal design challenge of, of, of a weight study. Yep. And you have to move the weight around in the boat of the engines and the fuel tanks and the batteries and so on to uh, make sure the boat floats on its lines. <clears throat> and our designer, Doug Zern, does a great job of that. Um, and in terms of the IPS and the, uh, 
axes. Uh, you know, they're both both computer control uh, drives at uh, slow speeds. You know, when you put your, your throttles and gears in the neutral, then you, you take over the joystick, and it's really for just maneuvering around in the harbor here, not for actually driving the boat with a joystick. And uh, it takes those two drives, and the computer operates them independently. It's not like a regular twin where they're both fixed drives and they have rudders. It's uh, the drives actually have rudders. There are no rudders and no thrusters on these boats. And so if you want to move the boat sideways, one drive reigns that way and goes forward, another drive goes this way and goes aft. And so you have a constant, even pull of the boat sideways. A little easier than playing with sticks for a oh, yeah. uh, novice driver. Yeah, I mean, you can learn. Uh, probably a 15 year old can learn to drive this boat in 10 seconds because they're used to using joysticks on these computer games and so on and so forth. And, and it is easy, you just you just move it and work it into the slip. Uh, because the reason we came out with a 40 is because we I mean, were reluctant to do so earlier because the whole the MJM line. MJM stands for Mary Johnstone's Motorboat. I did not see that this is the first I've heard that. Excuse us, one second, Mr. Johnstone. Yeah. This is a uh, first mate exclusive. I have never heard the meaning of MJM before. Yeah, Mary, Mary was the inspiration for this, for this line of boats. Um, we were trying to create a boat that she could run by herself without me aboard. And that's important as all of us get older, we're less agile. And, um, so, it becomes our boat, not my boat, because they're going along to keep it happy. And we figured if, if it's a shared experience, and the wife or friend, girlfriend, or whatever, is just as enthused about the project as the guy, it's going to be easier to sell boats. And, uh, and they're going to have more fun when they're out there. Uh, boating. There's definitely a few people in the industry with the Women on the Water program trying to bring the wives on board, and I think uh, systems like this really make it easier um, to accomplish that. Uh, you mentioned Doug Zern, who I know has done a couple Downey-style boats. What uh, do you, what would you like to point out of, let's say, the MJM style lines? Uh, is there anything in particular that you think the MJM signature uh, really uh, typifies you as a Downey's boat? Well, first of all, it's the signature is important work. When we started out this business, we wanted a signature look. And we didn't want to run into the problem of people not, or the, or the uh, people copying the look. So this boat um, is, that, the look of that boat is patented. And that's why we take with our 29, our 34, and the 40, we have that look where the, the bottom of the uh, opening, window opening, parallels the shear line of the boat. Yep. And that's unusual. That's, you don't see that very often. And a para parabolic graphic shape of the window area is, uh, has a parabola facing forward rather than reverse. Yep, you can see the, the style line coming um, from the aft cockpit uh, along the cabin top under the windshield. Is that what you're pointing yeah, out? Right. Yeah, that's that whole, that whole look. Well, I think you did a, uh, a great job of it. When you look at some other manufacturers, you know, I look at a lot of boats and I say, man, you know, their 60 looks good, but when they try and apply that design to their 45, you know, it just squashes it and it really loses it. And I think that uh, sticking to your signature really makes all your boats uh, look great. Yeah, and, and the uh, why why it's why is it down east? Well, most lobster boats have an open uh, pilot house. They don't have enclosed glass. Yeah, they don't have air conditioning either. Yeah. yeah and so what we're doing here is we put a corner post there. They don't have that corner post because they hang out a, a little crane. With a, with a block and tackle and all of the different things like that. So that's what they said. Open pocket it is reminiscent of a Downey's lobster bag. The bow is more reminiscent of a, of a uh, Carolina sport fish. To be able to run inlets without the bow going down into the water and solution sideways, one way or the other. So you want to get now that over those waves. Now we found so it makes it a great sea boat in a, in a big way. Because if you're not, you can keep going fast. And the boat will go down into the back of a wave and keep on going up rather than down one and go this way or that way. So it steers very well with an autopilot on that big sea. Uh, and then the stern, that tumble home, 
which is a rounded yep. on the stern. That's more reminiscent of a Packer craft or one of the old Adirondack type speedboats. So we have, and then the, the, the larger windows in the side are somewhat reminiscent of an old Matthews cruiser from the 1950s where they had a fairly big opening. So the whole, it has pieces of, that are reminiscent of other boats that I've liked in the past and uh, we put them kind of all together in one for, for better functionality and good looks. It looks great. Um, from the traffic we've seen you getting at the show, I hope you're having a great show. Good to see you again. We are thank you for your time. All right, Trevor. Thanks very much. Thank you again. Signing off from the Mi from the beautiful Miami Boat Show, Bob Johnstone, Trevor Duke, with First Mate Yacht Care.